Hello everyone. I'd like to introduce the next present uh, uh, Dr. Jun Lu. She is an associate chief physician graduate from West China Medical Science University and it's a secretary of the HSR department, Sichuan Province Hospital. And he's mainly engaged in contrasting U.S. and the interventional ultrasound work and the research. And uh, from 2014 and 2015 as a visiting scholar in Bristol uh, Arsizio Hospital, Italian and affiliate hospital of Regensburg University, German, and the Total age of Professor Sobieti and Professor Jun, and uh, so it's my honor to invite uh, Doctor Jun Lu to have a presentation. Doctor Jun Lu, hello. It's my great pleasure to be here to show our Chinese experiments on the diagnosis value of virus for breast lesions using CUS. Um, my, uh, I'm Doctor Lu from Sichuan Provincial People's Hospital. Uh, from the very beginning, we need to know we need to know the advantages of ultrasound nowadays and the main problems we face. Let's say some lit literatures which published last year and this year. The first paper is led by our Chinese doctor. It's a multi-center red randomized trial which want to comparing ultrasound and mammography for screening breast cancer in high-risk Chinese women. It uh, included 14 breast centers, uh, enrolled 13,339 patients. Its conclusion showed us that ultrasound is superior to mammography. And as you know, the, in China, ultrasound is the first choice and cheapest examination for the breast screening because the Chinese women tend to have smaller or dense breast. How about in other countries? This is the second literature which published this year. It's uh, led by ACR. It's a project for six. It's also one to uh, talk about how about ultrasound as the primary screening test for breast cancer. It's enrolled 20 sites in the United States, Canada, and Argentina and enrolled 2,809 patients. Its conclusion showed us that cancer detection rate with ultrasound is comparable with mammography, and that ultrasound with a greater proportion of invasive and not negative cancers among ultrasound detection. But there's also a problem when we use ultrasound. It is that false positive are more common when we use ultrasound. So, uh, based on the literatures we showed us before, uh, we have the impression that uh, ultrasound is more and more common use, not only in China, but also in the United States for the Caucasian women, because uh, with the improvement of resolution of ultrasound. But it's also faced some problems. The first problem and the main problem is the false positive uh, findings that's, and the overdiagnosis. We think that because ultrasound is uh, operator-dependent examination and there's always uh, poor inter-observer agreement when we use it, so it led to overdiagnosis. But uh, another very important reason we think that is the, there's no microvascular information in biorats we use now. As you know, CDFI is not uh, good enough for us to uh, detect the microvascular. But uh, microvessels information is really very important when we do the differential diagnosis of benign and malignant nodules. And the third, we think that until nowadays in clinical practice, no one can tell the patient uh, the right, the clear answer that how to know risk of malignant transformation in benign lesions. So, nowadays we have contrast ultrasound. We think, how about it, uh, we can use it to improve the bariats we use now, and what can it do? 
uh, let's see an uh, example. This is a uh, 40 years uh, old female, and its breast lesions uh, will be classified into virus 4C, and the suggestion to biopsy will be uh, given to this patient. And we do the contrast ultrasound. Let's see the contrast video. It shows like this. When we see this contrast video, we will get many informations from it, uh, such as the enhancement features. When we do the qualitative analysis, there's an enhanced time, enhanced intensity, uh, and perfusion defects, and enhanced re direction or the scope, scope of lesion. So many features and many informations we can get. And also we can get the quantitative analysis in match, which shows us the TIC, and we can also get more many parameters from this quantitative analysis. So the question is coming. When we use contrast ultrasound, how to analyze these patterns? And the second, which patterns are useful? And the third, qualitative or quantitative analysis, which one is useful? So when, when we use ultrasound, contrast ultrasound in breast lesions, we need to answer these questions. We think about how about we build some predictive models which will be easier to use and, um, has the, and can help us a lot to do the differential diagnosis. So why we try to uh, get some our dreams. The first is when we use contrast ultrasound, we want to maximizing reduction of forced positive biopsy and reduce the overdiagnosis. And the second, at the same time, we need to minimizing misdiagnosis of invasive breast cancer. And the third, easy to use when we use contrast and good inter-observer agreement as possible as we can. So we built some predict models, uh, three benign models as follows the DEF model. The D model, the lesions must show hyperenhancement and be equal after enhancement compared with the grayscale ultrasound. And it should be show a regular shape, must without nourishing vessel. This is the D model. The E model, it shows slow or synchronous washing with ISO enhancement. The shape and margin cannot distinguish after enhancement without perfusion defect and nourishing vessels. The F model, this lesion must show slow or synchronous washing with hypo enhancement with equal uh, region after enhancement or smaller after enhancement compared with the grayscale ultrasound and must without nourishing vessel. These are the benign predictive models. Let's see some examples. At as follows. There are three lesions from three different patients. Let's say the first contrast. This lesion showed us this it is hyper enhancement with equal size after enhancement with regular shape and without nourishing vessel. The second lesion it shows synchronous washing with ISO enhancement, shape and margin cannot distinguish after enhancement and without perfusion defect and nourishing vessel. Most of the time, the, the lesion shows this kind of contrast appearance. It is sometimes it's very hard to um, analyze it. It is uh, quickly washing or uh, synchronous washing or it is hyper enhancement or it is ISO enhancement. And this time we need to use quantitative analysis to uh, help us to avoid the subjective bias. And the third lesion, it shows, the lesion is here. It shows the slow washing with hypo enhancement. The lesion will be smaller after enhancement compared with the grayscale ultrasound. And it's without nourishing vessel. These lesions, contrast appearance accord with the predict models, uh, benign predict models D, E, and F. And the uh, final histopathologic results shows all these lesions are benign lesions. The followings are the malignant predict models. 
uh, there's also three models, A, B, and C. The A model, the lesion must show hyper enhancement and be larger after enhancement, with or without irregular shape. The B model, the lesion also must show hyper enhancement with central petal enhancement, with perfusion defect, with or without enlarging. The C model, the lesion shows rapid or synchronous washing with hyper or iso enhancement, but the lesion must show nourishing vessels or crab core like pattern with or without perfusion, perfusion defect. Let's see some examples. Here are four different lesions from four patients. Let's see the first lesion. What's the contrast with, with appearance? It shows that this lesion with nourishing vessel, it's the penetrating vessel, we can see, and it's a hyper enhancement and be larger compared with the gray scale ultrasound and with unclear margin and irregular shape. The second lesion, it also shows the penetrating vessel at the very beginning, and it's the hyper enhancement with nourishing vessel and with out perfusion defect and enlarging. It's enhanced region keeps uh, keeps the same compared with the gray scale ultrasound. And the third lesion, it shows hyper enhancement with central petal enhancement, hyper and central petal enhancement. And it to be larger compared with the gray scale ultrasound. Uh, it also shows unclear margin and irregular shape compared with the gray scale ultrasound. The fourth lesion, it also shows quickly washing with hyper enhancement and to be larger compared with the gray scale ultrasound, but it keeps regular and regular shape and clear margin. It also occurred with the malignant predicted models. So this four lesions all occurred with the malignant pre predicted models. All of, this, all of these lesions are IDC. So our single center pers perspective study shows that uh, if we want to refine the biorats, use the contrast. Uh, when we enroll the patient, uh, which in the first examination with ultrasound or mammography that, that, that fight the breast lesion and which classified in BIRATS 4 or 5, and the doctors give the suggestion to this patient to receive biopsy. Before biopsy, we give all these lesions contrast examination. After contrast, we will give a re-biopsy. If the re-biopsy is 3, we don't need patient to receive biopsy. The biopsy rate will reduce from 100% to 50.64% as this blue line shows. But the cancer to biopsy yet will rise from 40.85% to 73.11%. And, and this time, we will get some misdiagnosis. Our misdiagnosis of invasive cancer is 2.98%. It's very similar with the BIRAT we use now, uh, which BIRAT 3, the uh, misdiagnosis of inv invasive cancer is less than 2%. Our study has been published uh, in the WJR this year. So, this result gives us confidence that ultrasounds may have a bright future to, uh, to let the BIRATS we use now to perform better. So we started the multi-center study in China from 2015, and until nowadays, there's 14 sites in joined our family. Let's see some cases which shows similar with two degree appearances and CDFI. Here are two lesions from two different patients with similar appearances of gray scale ultrasound, and also the similar CDFI. It's 
all of the all of the solutions should be classified in BIRATS 4B, and uh, BIRATS uh, biopsy is suggested for this patient. Let's see the contrast. What's the difference will be? The first patient, it shows the synchronous washing with ISO enhancement. After enhancement, the, the lesion's shape and margin cannot distinguish compared with the surrounding tissue. But the second patient shows the quickly washing with hyper enhancement and centripetal enhancement. It will be larger compared with the grayscale ultrasound. And it shows the crab crawl like pattern and there's a perfusion defect in the lesion. So this lesion occurred with the benign predictor model and this lesion occurred with the malignant, malignant predictor model. And this time we also need the quantitative analysis to help us to avoid the subjective bias. The histopathologic result shows that this patient is adenoma and this patient is IDC. And here's another two different lesions shows very similar appearances. We cannot do right differential diagnosis of benign or malignant. And the CDFI didn't help us a lot. All of these patients need to do the biopsy. But how about the contrast ultrasound? Let's see its appearance. This patient shows a quickly washing, but it shows ISO enhancement because the lesion after enhancement cannot be distinguished uh, from the surrounding tissue. And this patient shows the quickly washing with hyper enhancement, and here is a perfusion defect in the lesion. So this lesion occurred with the benign predictor model and this lesion occurred with the malignant predictor model. The quantitative analysis in match shows that this, this lesion shows the quickly washing but with the ISO enhancement and this lesion shows the quickly washing with hyper enhancement. So the final histopathologic result shows that this lesion is endinosis and this is DCIS. And here are two different lesions from two patients. It shows the non-negative non lesions in the breast. The color doppler didn't give us more help to do the differential diagnosis. Let's see the contrast ultrasound. And this lesion show also shows quickly washing with hyper enhancement and be enlarging after enhancement with unclear margin and irregular shape. This lesion is here. It also shows quickly washing with hyper enhancement. Both of the both of these lesions uh, occurred with the malignant predict models. So the final histopathologic result shows this lesion is IDC and this lesion is DCIS. And here's another two different lesions. It's also similar with appearance in two degree ultrasound and uh, similar CDFI. Contrast ultrasound shows this lesion has the penetrating vessel with quickly washing and hyper enhancement, enlarging after enhancement with unclear margin and irregular shape. This lesion also shows penetrating vessel, quickly washing, enlarging after enhancement, unclear margin and irregular shape. Both of them occurred with the malignant predict model. So both of them, one is IDC and one is DCIS. And here are another two different uh, lesions from two different patients. They are very similar with each other. It will be classified into virus 4C or 5. The CDFI uh, didn't help us a lot. But let's see what's the difference in contrast ultrasound. This patient shows that the lesion is slow washing with hypo enhancement. There's no penetrating vessel, no crack core like patterns. But this lesion 
here. We can see at the very beginning there's a penetrating vessel, penetrating vessel, and it's quickly washing with hyperenhancement and enlarging after enhancement with unclear margin and irregular shape. So this lesion occurred with the benign predict model and this lesion occurred with the malignant predict model. So after surgery, this lesion is endinosis and this one is IDC. So based on the previous uh, imaging, uh, cases, we can see that contrast is very useful uh, when we do the differential diagnosis for the critical breast lesions. But there's also some pitfalls in CUS. Let's see some examples. The first example, it shows there's a small lesion in the left breast. Uh, this lesion is uh, ec uh, hypoecho with irregular shape and with a uh, rich color doppler. The contrast ultrasound shows it occurred with the malignant model A. It shows quickly washing and uh, enlarging after enhancement. But the final histopathologic results, this lesion is inflammatory lesion. The second one, we can see here is a lesion, the taller than wide, and with unclear margin and irregular shape. This lesion will be classified into BIRATS 4B or 4C when we depend on the 2 degree ultrasound. So we do the contrast. It also shows the quickly washing with hyperenhancement and enlarging after enhancement. It occurred with the malignant predict model A. But, uh, and uh, we also do the quantitative analysis. It also shows the quickly washing and hyperenhancement. But the final histopathologic results, this lesion is the endinosis with columnar cell change. It's a precancerous pre lesion. These two lesions are very interesting. When we use the contrast in breast lesions, uh, there's something we need to care about. The first, we need to choose the specialized probes. Uh, we need to choose the superficial probe with the low frequency. And we need to choose the parameters on our machine. And you, most of the time, you need to adjust your parameters of your machine with your engineer. It's very important. The second, 3.6 or 4.8 millimeter dose of contrast is needed to injection for the breast contrast. The third one is due view and enough normal breast tissue around the lesion is very important for us to compare with each other. Um, the, four, the fourth is that the scan selected for contrast should be hypervascular with penetrating vessels or with irregular shape, avoiding thick calcification with shandle behind it and fluid areas. The fifth, the probe should put on the skin near the lesion slightly without much pressure. Blender with water can be used if lesion is too close to the probe. For deep or large lesions, we can choose abdomen probe with low frequency. Six, sometimes change from cross-sectional to sagittal or radial section for another more contrast ultrasound will bring you more information if you are not satisfied with the first examination. Uh, as you know, nowadays, we, most of the time, we use the, the two degree ultrasound to do the contrast. So we only get one scan plan information from the lesion. The seven, quantitative analysis can help us avoid subjective bias if it's not easy to judge the enhancement patterns. Eight, contrast ultrasound may not be applicable for breast diffused lesions and it's, it's still hard to identify different types of pathology. Our conclusion is like that. To make the BIRATS better, use contrast is our dream. We think that BIRATS can be improved if we use contrast because more 
microvascular information, which is very important in benign and malignant nodules from, uh, to uh, do the differential diagnosis between benign and malignant nodules. And CUS may predict risk of malignant transformation in those benign lesions, because as malignant transformation may combine with microvascular proliferation, which may be showed by contrast ultrasound. So, thank you a lot. Well, thank you, your excellent presentation. Do you have any questions? So, do you have any tips or experience, especially in the CUS, uh, want to share with us? The Sentinel, Sentinel lymph nodes, the experience on Sentinel lymph nodes contrast? Yes. Uh, yes, we, we did some work on this area, but uh, we think it's uh, very useful. Uh, but before the uh, surgery and uh, reduce the, uh, the uh, areas uh, that um, before the surgery uh, it's maybe have the bright future um, because we can use the contrast to detect the sentinel lymph nodes uh, and do the ultrasound guided biopsy before the surgery um, but there's also some problems we face in our clinical practice. Uh, we, we did some patient, but we uh, don't have much more experience, uh, experiences on these areas. Uh, we will do more work on that. Yes, I want to know whether you have already used CUS to locate the SNL. SN, SNL, yeah, yes. Uh, Do you have any characteristics of CUS for the SNL, which yeah. the injection pathway you used? Yes, um, we will, we did some work uh, for this uh, on these areas to inject the contrast under the skin and uh, do the ma do the massage, and then. After that, we will use our scan to follow the uh, detect the uh, sentinel lymph nodes. And if we will find the, the first lymph node, we find it. We think it's the uh, sentinel lymph nodes, and do the biopsy before the surgery. We think it's very useful. Maybe have the bright future, uh, but there's also some problems when when we use it. Sometimes we cannot detect the uh, sentinel lymph nodes uh, very easily or sometimes it cannot be detect, detect. So why it happens, uh, we will do more work on these areas. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your excellent presentations. Now let's move to the last speaker.